Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Precious Lamb of God, you are great. Hallelujah. There's no God like Jehovah. He reigns forever in power, dominion, and authority. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to get started just a moment. Praise the Lord God Almighty. I pray that you have had a great and wonderful day in the presence of the Lord. That you're standing fast in the faith of Jesus Christ. No matter what challenges come your way, you're continually trusting in the Lord and his word. <clears throat> For the word tells us it's better to trust in the Lord then put confidence in man. When you begin to seek the Lord and trust in his word, God manifests according to his word in your life, circumstance, and situations. It's so important as a child of God to learn how to seek the Lord's face every day. We all face with challenges and disappointments, discouragements, issues of life, things that are beyond our control to handle. Yet God shows up in our situations merciful and sovereign and holy and able to redeem, to deliver, to sanctify, to lead and guide us in his truth and righteousness in the path we has chosen for you to walk in every day of your life. But you have to be willing to make a confession with your heart, out of your mouth, that I need the Lord. Be willing to admit when you have done wrong, when you made mistakes, and allow the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the grace of God to restore you, to forgive you, to show you mercy and compassion and give you the ability to continue to move forward in your purpose and calling God has placed on your life. Amen. So, Father, tonight I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to share your word. I pray, O oh God, that you speak by your spirit a rhema word, a word, Father God, from the heart of God, from the Logos that will help Strengthen the weak. Empower those who have no might. Increase strength. Bring healing and deliverance in those who stand in need of a touch from you, God. I ask, Father God, that you would manifest your power in all of our lives. Destroy the yokes and the burdens of sin in our hearts. Bad behaviors and strongholds. Lies spoken to us by the devil, God, to cause us to doubt your word. That you increase our faith to trust in your ability and your word. To move forward in our calling. And to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we have been called. Forgive us for our sins, O oh God, known and unknown. Remove the business of the day from our hearts today, O oh God, from our minds. That we have a clear conscience to hear from you, O oh God. That you would give us a word, O oh God, that will orchestrate our pathway to follow you all the days of our lives. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. 
We're going to continue in our book tonight, Breaking Threefold Demonic Cord. Put it on the screen. This is what we're in, the same book we've been in for the last uh, few months. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on in my voice, but the devil's a lie. We're going to continue in the word of God and allow the spirit of God to minister to our hearts tonight. That God will provoke us, challenge us, change us, direct us, guide us in the truth and righteousness of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we glorify you. I praise you, Lord God. I worship you, Father. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can serve throughout eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can serve throughout eternity long and find there is none like you. Your mercy flows like a river wide. Healing comes from your throne. We are in need from a touch from you, Lord. Come and change our hearts. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search throughout eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none, there is none, there is none, there is none like you. Amen, amen, amen. Again, praise the Lord God Almighty. There is none like the Lord Jesus Christ. No one can touch and search our hearts like the Lord Jesus Christ. He is faithful to hear his children's cry, to deliver, to set us free from the inside out, to empower us by his spirit, Keep moving forward in our purpose and our calling every day. As we learn how to be devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ and him only that we serve with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength. Amen. All right, we're going to get into our lesson. Two weeks ago, <clears throat> we left off talking about how Christ had to bring condemnation or a word of rebuke to the church at Thyatira. All because they tolerated the spirit of Jezebel to creep into the church. I looked up something here. Look at this word heretical. Heretical is believing in or practicing religious heresy. Heretical beliefs. A heretical theologian holding an opinion at odds with what is generally accepted. In other words, you're leaning to other false doctrines 
that contradicts God's word, which also in terms cause your heart to follow after paganism. Paganism is this. Look at this. Paganism, a religion other than the one of the main world religions. That's idolatry. That's idol worship. And when you give into that false spirit of idol worship, falling after other gods, your heart turns from the truth of God's word and follow after a lie. So the Lord is speaking to us tonight how important it is to pay attention who feeds into your spirit, who, who leading you, who's guiding you, who's instructing you, who's counseling you. Because everybody who sounds good does not have your best interest at heart. You'll find out that there are a lot of false teachers in the church. And they claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. They bring forth heresy, idol worship. They bring forth delusional spirits into the house of God, witchcraft, satanic worship in the house of God, which will deter you from your faith to following the truth of God's word. When you get to the place in yourself and you study God's word for yourself, who cares what folks say about you? Who cares how they don't like you? Who cares? Who don't? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people feel about you. It's what God says about you. When you've been called by God, you've been given a new name. And that name is Jesus Christ. And his name has been stamped on your heart as a seal of approval that you've been guaranteed to be a child of God, a follower of Jesus Christ. You're going to find a lot of folk just don't like you because of who you are. You have to know who you are and whose you are. You got to know the word of God for yourself and not allow anybody to manipulate, control, deceive, mislead you to follow after heresies, false doctrines. False doctrines, paganism is a movement that swept across the whole world. And that practice caused a lot of people to lose their lives. I remember back in the 80s, there was a movement by Jim Jones who seduced the people of God to follow his false teachings, which in turn caused them to commit suicide because they felt they were doing the right thing for God. They were being misled, being deceived, being manipulated, controlled, brainwashed, and they followed after false teaching, which led them to a place of destruction, and suicide would take you to hell. That's not God's will for you to commit suicide to kill yourself. People in the body of Christ, they commit spiritual suicide every time they begin to doubt God's word out. The enemy to control their thought life, to make them feel that God doesn't care about them, God doesn't love them. There's a lot of people dealing with mental illness, suicidal thoughts, dealing with anxiety, stress, depression. All because their minds have turned from trusting in the word of God, believing the word of God, speaking the word of God, so that confession begins to align up with the heart of the world that goes against God's word. Some believe that Christ does not rebuke or condemn. The word does not say that there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, but goes on further to say, it doesn't just say that, but it goes on further to say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you walk after the spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's spirit, the governing spirit of the Holy Ghost, you will not allow the dictates of anybody else to come into your life to manipulate, control, and deceive you from turning away from God's truth. 
If you turn from the truth, you're going to fight out the lie. Read Romans 8 and 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. Those who are in Christ Jesus walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you walk according to the dictates of the flesh, you will allow the enemy to deceive you, manipulate you, to control you, to follow after the lie. We got to get in the word of God for ourselves. Let me turn to this right quick. I'm going to show you all something here. This is really good. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1, chapter 8, verse 1, it says here, Therefore, is there, therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 2, For the law of the spirit of what? Life. He's talking about the agape, the Zoe life of God, the love of God, the life of Christ. Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Listen to this. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Listen to this. Believers may be chastened of the Lord but would not be condemned with the world by the, uh, by the union with Christ through faith they are thus secured. What is the principle of their walk? The flesh or the spirit? The old or the new nature? Corruption or grace? For which of these do we make provisions? By which are we governed? The unrenewed will is unable to keep any commandments fully. And the law besides outward duties require inward obedience. God showed abhorrence of sin, and that was he detests sin, by the suffering of the Son in the flesh, that believers, that the believers person might be pardoned and justified. Thus satisfaction was made to divine justice. And the way of salvation opened for the sinners. By the spirit of the law of love is written upon the hearts. And though the righteousness of the law is not fulfilled by us, yet, blessed be God, it is fulfilled in us. There is that in all true believers which answers the intentions of the law. The favor of God the welfare of the souls, the concern of eternity are the things of the Spirit which those that are after the Spirit do mind. Which way do, we say, which way do our thoughts move with ple most pleasure? Which way go our plans and contrivance? Are we most wise for the world or for our souls? Those who live in the pleasure are dead. A sanctified soul is a living soul that is life, that life is peace. The carnal mind is not, not only an enemy of, of my God, an enemy of God, but enmity itself is against God. The carnal man made by the power of divine grace may be subject to the law of God, but the carnal mind never can, that it must be broken and driven out. Listen to this. Let's go a little further. It says, we may know our flesh states, our flesh states and character by inquiring whether we have the Spirit of God and Christ or not. 
<coughs> Excuse me. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Having the spirit of Christ means having turn, a turned mind in some degree like the mind that was in Christ Jesus and to be shown by the life and conversation suitable to his precepts and example. His precepts, his laws and decrees. So because of the sinful nature, you have to make a decision that I would not be governed and guided by the flesh, but I will be dominated, ruled, and governed by the Holy Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you'll find out that as you go on further in life, the influences, the enticements, the desires of the flesh become less and less effective in you as you learn how to change your conversation, to allow your mind to be transformed by the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, that the enemy cannot dominate and control your destiny. You are guided and governed and led by the Holy Spirit when you learn how to shut down the mind of the flesh. That's good. That's really good. This passage is clear. <coughs> Excuse me. That there is condemnation for those who are not walking after the Spirit and are guided by the flesh. Jesus says this this way. The men love darkness rather than light. They avoid the light because if they come to the light. It's going to be they're going to be exposed, right? But it says he came out to the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. But whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already. In other words, judgment has been passed on them already in the spirit because they refuse to submit to his lordship and authority and come to repentance and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the church of Thyatira was led by the flesh, a demonic spirit, it suffered Christ's condemnation. So it would condemn for allowing the spirit of Jezebel, the false prophetess, to cause them to commit fornication and eat food sacrificed to idols and follow after heresies and false teachings. Listen to this. Let me remind you that Jezebel called herself a prophetess, but she was not. She's a false leader, a false prophet, a deceiver, a controller, a manipulator, a liar, a thief. And then taught and seduced the people to commit fornication and eat food sacrificed to idols. I have already discussed how the enemy can falsely prophesy. If we believe what he says, then God considers this idolatry. So if you give in to a seducing spirit, and allow the enemy to bring confusion in your mind, you will spread poison in the body of Christ. Because you follow after the lying deception of the enemy, you will spread the same poison among others in the body of Christ to bring a damnable spirit upon them to cause them to doubt God's word and stop following the Holy Spirit. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to convict you and change you and bring you to repentance. And once you come to repentance, it doesn't matter what people say, it doesn't matter what they do, you're going to stand firm footed and rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ and not be moved from your position in Christ 
and keep on following after God's word. It's the same as eating food sacrificed to idols. In essence, we are eating the devil's words. So if you give in to false prophecies and believe what the devil says, you're eating the false words. You're eating the devil's words. You're eating at his table. God prepares a table before the presence of your enemy and anoints you here with oil. The devil prepares a table before you of destruction to take away your anointing. You have to determine what voice am I listening to? Who am I following? Who's leading me? Who's guiding me? Do they have my best interest at heart? Are they there to help lift me up, to encourage me, to edify, to build me up in the faith through God's word, to pray over me and not pray on me? Are they there to see me succeed or to bring me down from my demise? It's up to you to make a decision in yourself. Who am I going to follow? Who, are, who is going to govern my, my life? Who is going to be there as my example and my mentor? When you gravitate to people who are sincerely walking in the truth of God's word, you'll find out the same anointing begins to fall upon you and empower you to walk in your purpose. The same blessings upon their life begins to fall upon you and cause you to receive the same blessings because of your submission to their authority and their leadership. That's why it's so important to pray for your leaders and cover them in the body of Christ. Pray for your pastor. Encourage them. Pray for your leaders in the church. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the deacons. Pray for the congregation. Pray for the people of God. The word tells us that we ought to pray in the spirit in behalf of all saints and all manner of prayers. You have to pray for them. You have to encourage them. Stand on the word of God. If you don't stand on the word of God, it behooves you, my brother, my sister, to get back into the place of prayer. When you begin to hear God's word speaking to you, listen to this. Ephesians 6, 18. After it gives you the instructions of putting on your full armor. See, the only way to defeat the Jezebel spirit in your life is to follow the standards that are set before you to put on your loin belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness the shoes of peace take the shield of faith put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God it didn't say the word of the world. It didn't say the devices of the world, the strategies of the world, the wisdom of the world. It says the word of God. Praying. Always. That means you got to intercede. Cover your brothers, your sisters in the spirit with God's word and his truth. It says prayer. Pray always with all prayer. See, that, that's a point right there that God taught me a long time ago to different leaders I sit under in the body of Christ. There are different types of prayers we can pray for the body of Christ. We can pray the prayer of healing, the prayer of deliverance, the prayer of victory, the prayer of faith, the prayer of covering, the prayer of encouragement, the prayer of strength. We can go on and on with a whole list of prayers that we can pray in the body of Christ and supplicate. That means put your request into God in the spirit. So whatever I'm praying for, if someone come to me and say, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. I'm going through a financial situation. I need God to touch my finances because I, I got to pay these bills. 
I gotta take care of my family. I gotta pay, take for my children. All these different things I need prayer for. I need prayer for healing. You gotta supplicate. That means pleading with God in their behalf, covering them. And then it says, and watching thereunto with all perseverance. You know what perseverance is? Keep on striving forward. Keep moving forward. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up midstream. I don't care how tough it becomes, how bad things happen in your life. I don't care. I'm going to keep persevering. I'm going to keep moving forward. And I'm going to supplicate for all saints. Even though I might be under attack, I'm going to continue to keep on praying in behalf of the saints with God's word by his spirit. I'm going to keep interceding for them regardless of what's going on in, in my life. I'm going to put their situation before my situation. So if I supplicate and I pray in all manner of prayers we have of, of the body of Christ, watching there too. I'm praying and watching. Remember Jesus when he went into the garden of, of Gethsemane, he told the disciples, you stay here while I go yonder to pray. In other words, he had to go supplicate. He had to go, go into a place of perseverance in the garden because he knew that the time was coming of crucifixion. But in, in, in time of his preparation, he went into the garden to supplicate. Because he knew that I have to go to the cross and I have to prepare my mind, get my heart right, to align it with God's word, to do what God has called me to do. Because I am the word, but the word has to submit to the word, which is God. Amen. Amen. And that's something. So because of that, he says, persevere and supplicate for all saints. So when you get to the place, listen to this. There are privileges as being the children of God. There are privileges. There are privileges. There's hopeful prospects on the tribulations. So I got hope and I have an expectation, even on the tribulations, that God is going to bring me through it. Their assistance, their assistance is from the Spirit in prayer. So when I go into supplication and prayer, we have all saints, I, I get assistance. The word says that God sent angels to minister to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. And the Amen. same way he interceded for them, he us. does the same thing for us when we start praying in behalf of one another. Amen. This is another point. Their interests in the love of God. There's interest in the love of God. So you got to be motivated. Got to have a desire. Put God first. Their final triumph is through Christ. Now these numbers that it's talking about verses 10 through 17, Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, they're privileged as being the children of God. 18 through 25, there are hopeful prospects on the tribulations. Verse 26 and 27. <coughs> excuse me. Their assistance is from the Spirit in prayer. Verse 28 to 31. Their interest in the love of God. So is that your interest? Is that your desire? Is the love of God to know God's love? Verse 32 to 39, their final triumph, your victory through Christ Jesus. There's victory in Christ Jesus. There's overcoming faith in Christ Jesus. Because if you know how God loves and cares for you, it doesn't matter what the world does to you, but you know God for yourself, that you're standing on the word of truth, and you're trusting in God's word, believing that he gives you the power to overcome and the freedom from condemnation. 
This is the uh, this is Romans. That's a correction, not Ephesians, but Romans. But it ties to what we're talking about. Because oh, when what? you get to the place, Romans chapter one. Okay. <clears throat> Romans chapter one. Okay. Listen, I'm gonna go to Ephesians. Let me show y'all something here too. So Ephesians chapter six. Okay. Ten through eighteen. Okay. Spiritual strength and courage are needed for spiritual warfare and suffering. Spiritual strength and courage are needed for spiritual warfare and suffering. Those who would prove themselves to have true grace must aim at all grace. Oh, God yes. is grace. God yes. is grace. And put on the whole arm of God which is the preparation that God does to bestow upon us. The Christian armor is made to be worn and there is no putting off our armor until we have done our warfare in the finish and finish our course. You hear that? Amen. When you put on your spiritual armor, you should not take your armor off. So it ain't no such thing. I got to lay my religion down. Exactly. Yeah. I heard that many times growing up. When someone yeah. made a person mad in the church, yeah. I'm going to take off my armor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off my religion and give you a piece of my mind. Amen. They said in a minute, you know, because the flesh is still dominated through carnality. Mm -hmm. But when you have been submitted and committed to following God's grace and mercy and his truth and his word, I'm going to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to give me the words to say why well, I don't have to take off my religion. Because God is not about religion. He's about the relationship. Amen. And once I walk in the relationship with Jesus Christ, just like he did in the Garden of Gethsemane, he supplicated in behalf of all saints. He, he continued in prayer and persevered, even to the point, it says, sweat fell like drops of blood yeah, yeah. in agony. Because he knew he had something to do on that cross to bring redemption. Right, right. Listen to this. The combat is not against human enemies, nor against our own corrupt nature only. In other words, it's against your human nature. We have to do, we have to do with the enemy who has thousands of ways of beguiling unstable souls, tricking, cunning, craftiness, deception. Listen to this. The devils, I like this, this is this is good. It says the devils assault us in things that belongs to our souls. <laughs> The devil assaults us in things that belong to our souls mm, mm, mm. And, and labor to the face. <laughs> this is good. Labor to the face, the heavenly image in our heart, the image in our heart of God. He's talking about of God, of Jesus Christ. He wants to be faced. In other words, take Christ away from you. To show mm -hmm. you the carnality and not show you Christ's grace and mercy. Show you the mm -hmm. image of Christ that you are supposed to be subjected to. Mm -hmm. We must resolve by God's grace not yield to Satan. Resist him and he will what? He will flee. flee. If we give way, he will get ground. If we distrust either our cause or our leader or our armor, we give him advantage. Mm -hmm. So that's what, why it's so important as a child of God to know the word of God for yourself because it becomes difficult, it becomes challenging when I don't pray, I don't spend time in God's presence and I'm trying to fight a spiritual battle. That's when I revert right back to the carnality and fight flesh with flesh and not the spirit against the flesh. Amen, that is so true. You know, that's why it's important as a child of God mm -hmm. 
to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but right divide the word of truth. Amen. And, and you know what pops out? What I yes. have been telling myself that I'm not fighting against the flesh. Right. My family is the spirit that's within them and me. That's so it. I believe myself out now. <laughs> you know, that's right. So the word points right, it's pointing me too. You know, that's so it. The spirit that we're steady fighting, and those spirits that get so strong. It does. Yes, it does. So strong. It's like they, they overwhelm and oh, it's like, it's, I don't know, they, they get strong. That's all I can say. I have to mm -hmm. do much, much prayer. I didn't even go to the point where I'm just like anointing my head with oil now. Lord. I just, you know, get those things out of me. Yes, there. yes. I don't, you like, have I, don't to. Like the, I don't like the way I feel. I don't like me right now. I don't like what I feel with those things. You understand know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. That's it. And you mm -hmm. have to anoint your head with oil to cover yourself in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Before you leave your house, anoint yeah. yourself. Pray over yourself. Pray the right. word over yourself. Pray the word right. over your children. Over your family, yes. that they will be covered when they leave out of your house Amen. by the Spirit of God. Amen. And protect them from the attacks of the enemy that might be plotting and planning after they leave the house to, for their demise, to destroy them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it's important to really know the Word of God. Because when you don't study the Word of God and you try to go out, the enemy is going to attack you in the weakest time you find you vulnerable. Amen. He knows Amen. when you're vulnerable. Yes, he do. You know, and we have to get to a place in ourselves where we stay focused and hear God's voice. Heed to his voice. Follow his voice. Know his voice from the voice of the enemy. Listen to this. I'm going to read this point then we get back to our book. So the different parts of the armor of a heavy armed soldier who had to sustain the fiercest assault of the enemy are here described. There is none for the back, nothing to defend those who turn back in Christ or Christian warfare. Yeah. It didn't say about the back. It talked about the front. Exactly. In other words, I don't have time as a child of God to keep looking back hey. of what people are trying to do to me behind me. Right, right. God got that. Yes, he do. He wants you to see him before you as your shield and your defense to cover you. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to allow the Holy Spirit to put a bit in your mouth and a bridle on your tongue. Amen. Because if he allow, if we allow the Spirit of God to guard our mouths, we're careful of the things that we speak. And we're not going to allow him to deceive and manipulate us to speak things contrary to God's word. Listen to this. Truth or sincerity is the girdle. The girt, this girds on all the other pieces of the armor and it's first mentioned. Why? Because the girdle is a part that the, arm, the Roman soldiers use to hold up the rest of the piece of the armor. Mm -hmm. Without the girdle, the other parts wouldn't stay on. If you look it up and study about the armor of the Roman soldiers, you'll find how much it was important it was to have that girdle. Everything else was connected as a protection from the head to the foot. Right. So when they go into battle, they know how to fight against their opponent. We as children of God must know how to fight against the enemy who comes against us to attack us, to deter us, to distract us, to mislead us from following in God's truth and righteousness. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about the rest of that later on. We'll get back to the book because it's a part I want to talk about tonight that's in the book. Okay. Okay. And um, the book I sent it to you, I sent you what it is on Messenger 2. I sent it to yeah, you. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. I got it. So, oh. it says, what about fornication? During the trade guild festivals, that means the market or the merchants festivals, when all the merchants came together, for a festival to sell their possessions or their, their stuff, to do exchange, do trades, and all that. People not only consume the food sacrificed to idols, but they also participated in lit, 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 
rights in which religions or sects were mingled. So in other words, sinful behavior, sinful things that other people were doing, they participated in. And these were people of God. Mm. He's talking about the church. They're not talking about mm. the sinner world. Because mm. the sinners are going to do what they do. Right. But if you allow the spirit of Jezebel to tolerate, be tolerated in your church, then mm. everyone else that comes along is going to continue to entice you to follow after the patterns and deception of the enemy. Listen to this. So in addition to consuming the devil's portions, the young church in Thyatira had been seduced to embrace lawlessness, superstition, and devil worship, legalism, and sexual sin. That's why God had to condemn the church. After he appraised them, he told them of the good things they'd done, mm -hmm. how he was pleased with what they'd done, but he had to bring judgment and correction, rebuke, wow. chastisement. Mm. They have become especially vulnerable to false doctrine if the teachings were catering to the lust of the flesh. You hear that? Yeah, yeah. They became vulnerable to heresy. False teachings that entice the lustful desires of the flesh. There are three things that operate in the flesh every day of our life without Christ. Lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh yes, and the pride God. of life. Amen. If you give it to these three spirits, yes. you find yourself given to the spirit seducing spirits that will entice and mislead you to turn away from Christ. Can I say something in regards to yes. the lust of the flesh? Lust of the flesh. I look at it, it's not only just uh, sexual desires. That's right. You, you know, we lust after materialistic things. Yes, we do. So, jewelry, cars, money. You know, the Bible speaks of the, for the love of money. That's it. We lust that's after it. soul. And that's why I believe why the world is in such a shape. Not money. It is. It is. It's the money. Yep. Because of desire. Control. Sinful desire. Yeah, sinful desire. That's it. And that's and what he was talking it. about, how it crept into the church. The yeah. desire to turn away from the truth. Yeah. You know, so I, I tell you, when we when we really pay attention, when God began to show us the world, if yeah. you really pay attention in the spirit, you'll see the enemy at work. Amen. Some people Amen. in the body of Christ cannot see the enemy at work because they're already on his team. <laughs> they're on his team. You're they're right. blinded. You're right. You're right. That's why he said if the gospel be hid. It's here to those who are, have been blinded by the enemy. Uh, uh, uh. It's so important as a child of God to allow the Spirit of God to come into your heart, to open your heart, to be aware and know the enemy's devices, know his tactics, see him at work when he comes to attack you, to manipulate, to control you, to deceive you, and lead you where it says here. If we open our lives to, to the spirit of whoredom, then we also open the door to Jezebel's stronghold. And oh, whoredom, wow. it means going after other gods, lusting after right. other gods. Right. And that's the problem God had with the body of Christ. Today, oh, they tolerate the spirit of Jezebel to lead them to a spirit of whoredom. That's why we're quick to turn against one another, body of Christ. We're quick to talk about one another. We're quick to put one another down instead of lifting them up. Amen. Because the spirit of order has entered to your heart. Yeah. You know, I look Go at, ahead. So I look at when I first came back into the body of Christ in my early 30s <sighs> to where I am now. Everything in the body of Christ is so different now that I wish we can go back to the first love we had. That's it. Please to him. That's it's it. not like that no more. Everybody's just for themselves. Amen. Amen. You're right, though. Everybody's about themselves. It's not about Christ. No. It's not about Christ being revealed in their lives. It's about what they can do for themselves and what they, you know, what they want for themselves. You know, and I tell you, when you really hear the voice of God speaking, you know, God will begin to show you himself. Amen. You know, and it's really, very, really important 
you know, to really listen to his voice and be governed by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Listen to this. You know, Go ahead. Amen. Because that's what, you know, I've been praying since I came uh, to uh, redeem faith. Yes. God has really been showing me. I knew the trouble that I was in. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I knew I had to get back, uh, get back, get me a yeah. covering. Get yes. Back into yes. The purpose God called me, you know, to do. And God has been speaking to me so clearly now that one why I couldn't hear him. That's right. You're right. I couldn't. I want to hear what I want to hear. But I didn't like that feeling. Yep. I'm not hearing him. That's it. You know? That's it. You're right. I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why I said a few weeks ago, I said we put spiritual earplugs in our ear. Yeah. We, we don't want to hear God's voice. Especially when I'm sinning. <laughs> <laughs> When we're sinning and we're comfortable in our sin, yeah, we put spiritual earplugs in our ear <laughs> to try to stop God from speaking to us to bring conviction. That's true. You're so right. But the thing is, <laughs> whatever I try to do to shut him out, he still comes in anyway. If you are <laughs> truly a child of God, I don't care how much you try to not listen to his voice, you're going to hear him one way or another. I remember when I was out there in the world, I was committing adultery and doing just doing just sinful things, right? You know, you know, and, yeah. and, and I tried to shut God out. Yeah. I didn't want to hear conviction. I didn't want to change. I was comfortable doing my mess. <laughs> and when God began to speak, the way God spoke to me, I'll tell you this real quick. I'm going to go to these points, and we're going to close out after these points. The Holy Spirit, because I'm a worshiper, uh, I start hearing worship songs in my ear. I tried to drown out with R&B songs, love songs, all the things the world can play to, to satisfy my flesh. Yeah. And the more I tried to drown it out, the mm. voice of worship kept overpowering those songs. Yeah. When I lie down, I kept hearing scriptures in my mind. Yeah. And I tried to shut it out. Yeah. And the more I tried to shut it out, the more and more I started getting convicted. So I tried to do even more sin. Yeah. And the so, more I tried so. to turn away from God, because he already had me, one thing God told me, which really which was, uh, uh, which was, was really good in my spirit, or say amazing to me, was that he says, you are still my anointed. Mm. You just did sinful things. Yeah, yeah. yeah See, because yeah, he says, I'm the one that anointed you you can't take the anointing away because I stamped my approval on you, but you tried to do things out of my will to where when the conviction came, you finally submitted to come back to me because he knew I was coming back. I yeah, couldn't stand yeah. seeing it too long without God convicting me. That's how much I love God because I have love for God. No matter what I do, I still love God. Amen. That's and the me. more yeah. God spoke to me, mm -hmm. the more he drew me back to himself. And I had to repent and tell God, I'm sorry. I remember yeah. I came home from work one morning. I fell on my face in worship and cried out to God and said, God, I'm so sorry yeah. for breaking your heart. Yes, God. And that's yes. when God restored me. Yes. You know, Ooh. so I encourage somebody. I don't care who you are tonight, what sin you're in, God mm -hmm. still loves you. Yes, he He's do. still calling you. He's still mm -hmm. there for you. Mm. He's commanded you to come back to him in repentance. They can run to you and, and, and cleanse you up and, and, and purify you. Because mm -hmm. he's right there for you. Yes, he is. I want to go into these points right quick before we mm -hmm. uh, end tonight. He mm -hmm. said, The spirit of whoredom manifests in several different ways. Listen to this unfaithfulness. Adultery. But I just talked about that. Unfaithfulness is adultery. Adultery is unfaithfulness. To your spouse, to your mate, to your God. Most of all, to your God. Secondly, the spirit of horror, spirit, soul, or body prostitution. <laughs> 
That's good. Remember yeah. Hosea? Read chapter 5 of Hosea. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Hosea chapter 5. The mm -hmm. key verse is verse 4. Okay. He says, okay. They would not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. They have not known the Lord. So the spirit of whoredom would turn your heart from knowing your God. Ain't that something? Thirdly, you know what? Go ahead. I had a girlfriend told me years ago about her husband. She felt that he committed a adultery on her when he stepped out and started using drugs. Is that a form of uh, or adultery on, on a marriage? Absolutely. Okay. Then. Because it's spiritual okay. adultery. Yeah, okay then. All right then. See, that's the thing. When it comes to adultery, people yeah. always think it's about sex. Right. Okay. okay. Adultery is any time you turn from God and start following out the other gods. You commit spiritual adultery. Adultery. Yeah. Anything you sin against God, you commit. You sin against God because God had a problem with the children of Israel. Read it many times in the Old Testament. How they went a whoring after other gods. Yes, you right. You right. They I committed spiritual that. adultery. It says. Mm -hmm. You right. To their God. And any time you allow the enemy to seduce you, to entice you, to bait you, to lead you away from God, you commit spiritual adultery. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. It is. It is. Another point. Chronic dissatisfaction. Chronic dissatisfaction. Anything is chronic is something that continues to keep happening. It's like a chronic illness. It's something you got to deal with. It's not gone. It's going to continue to be there. Until there's a remedy to remove it out of you. So anytime I have chronic dissatisfaction, that's the spirit of horror. Listen to this. The love of money. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Love of money is a root to all evil. Mm -hmm. So if you allow yourself to become a lover of the things of the world and not a lover of God, you commit spiritual prostitution. Fornication. Mm. Fornication is not just a sexual thing that people do. Wow. Fornication is when you turn away from God and you start giving it into seducing spirit of the enemy, committing spiritual sin. You know, I'm glad you explained this because people have pounded, I'm, I'm saying this all they pounding me. Mm -hmm. Adultery and fornication has something to do with. Sexual, right? Yeah, that's sexuality. all you hear the church talk about. They never talk about the stuff you talking about now. But that's all they talk about. Make people feel so guilty about even dating now. They do. They do. You know, like I can't. You know, I don't know. I get confused about that. I don't know, should have dated, should have not date. I. That's a whole other story. You know, and that, that's a good point too, because spiritual fornication. You know what fornicate means, right? To have sex mm. outside of marriage. Mm. The word tells us that we are married to the Lord through Jesus Christ. Right, right. So, that's the spiritual adultery. But fornication is where I refuse to be married to the Lord. And continue oh. to engage in a sin in the flesh as well as in the spirit against God. So anytime I engage in that type of behavior mentally, I commit spiritual fornication. Uh -huh. So I, I'll continue to allow myself to be enticed and baited to have sexual sins, adultery, drinking, lying, thugging, all kind of stuff that the flesh love to do. I fornicate with the enemy. Wow. And so then it leads me to idolatry. Yeah, okay. So idolatry uh -huh. now become to become to a place where I worship other gods. Right. So I'm gonna worship other gods because now I return from the true God to follow a false God. God said, "Thou shalt another God before me, for I'm a jealous God." Mm -hmm. And if you have an other God that you place before God, like it says here, the love of money, it can be your mate, be your possessions, be your job. I've known people allow their job to become an idol. They got to work, 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 darn it, 24 hours a day 
to make all this money to no avail. Amen. What's the word to that? What does it profit man to gain the whole world? And lose his soul. That's what they're doing. And that's what they're doing. Losing their soul. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes, the next point, excessive appetite. Mm, ain't that something? Excessive appetite. I know people like that too. Yeah. And they're never satisfied. Never satisfied. I'm always hungry for something more. Yeah. That's but true. really, most of the time, the hunger is God trying to draw you to himself. But we turn off his voice, because I don't want to hear his voice, so I have the spiritual hunger, and I try to satisfy it with fleshly things. Mm -hmm. And the fleshly things keep me in a place where I'm hungry. I'm malnourished. Mm. <laughs> malnourished. <laughs> Glory to God. Man, we man. become spiritual anorexics. <laughs> spiritual anorexics. Because I never can get enough. And what I do get, I regurgitate. Because I don't want it. And anorexic is an individual. Look it up. Who feels they're overweight. They can be so skinny and malnourished, they feel they're overweight. So anytime they eat something... They got to spit it up. Right. The enemy does the same thing in the body of Christ. Once you become anorexic, become excessive, never satisfied. Yeah. Always want to have more and more and more. And all the time is God trying to draw to himself to feed on him. What is it? God trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. Ain't that, and there was in, and what that, that movie, um, uh, no, it, was just it was in that movie. Purple. Yep. What is that? Color purple? It was in there. Young lady wasn't satisfied. She lived her life. Did what she wanted to do. And the Lord spoke to her through somebody else and told her, God is trying to tell you something. That's right. That's right. And she heard the voice finally of God and yeah. came to church in repentance. That's right. Praise God. The final point, we're going to stop right here, is worldliness. Ooh. Worldliness. You know what that is? Mm -mm. Being conformed to the world. The world, okay. Taking on the image of the world, the likeness of the world, the desires of the world, the mind of the world, the appetite of the world. So I, I gravitate to all that. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just as... We have a political party to live like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to pray. Yes. Against these things that we just yes. mentioned here. Unfaithful, unfaithfulness, adultery, spirit, spirit and soul, or body prostitution, chronic dissatisfaction, love of money, fornication. Idolatry, excessive appetite, and worldliness. Going to pray against these desires of the flesh Amen. to bring them to subjection. Amen. When I when I came to um, the Dean Faith, yes, I often tell my, I often remind, let me get it right. I often said to myself, I step back. I did a lot thing. Mm -hmm. A lot wife thing. That's I went it. back. <laughs> and I said, well, Lord, I didn't like that feeling. Right. I had stepped back to where he had delivered me from. So that's, that's probably my testimony right there. Amen. And and that means sometimes, you're right, grandson, Pop's still out here giving the devil a hard time. He's sick of you at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the devil's sick of me. He, he, <laughs> he, he mad because he can't stop me. Yeah, I know that's right. You know, and so, go ahead. I go. just think it was a drunk man fall some type of way. That's I right. Said, the last time I'm going to get back up, you are not going to win this. The victory is... That's right. So a week ago, I was afflicted with a respiratory infection. Even blacked out on Tuesday evening for four hours. And when I woke up, I said, what happened? Uh -huh. I didn't have a dream. I don't know what happened. All I knew, I felt myself at the point 
sitting at the table, get ready to eat something, feel like I'm about to pass out. And the room mm -hmm. started going dark. My vision started getting blurred. And I said, let me go lie in the bed right now before I fall on the floor. And as soon as I hit that bed, I blacked out. Wow. And I tell you, the devil is mad because he still couldn't stop me. Right, right. You know, so I want to let you know for a whole week, I kept praising God. I kept oh. praying, seeking his face. Even in that state I was in with illness, coughing, sneezing, running nose, body aches, everything, headaches, all this stuff was trying to get me down. Amen. But I said the devil was alive. Amen. And I kept praising God for my healing. And I said, God, I thank you that by your strife I'm healed. And by the end of the evening, went to the doctor on that Tuesday. Went again two days later and got antibiotic. And it started running stuff out of my system. Mm -hmm. And I've been feeling better and better. I'm still dealing with it slightly, but every day it's running out because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not just the medication, but the right. power of the Holy Spirit based on my faith to believe in God's word. Amen. That's I, right. yes. It is. I that tell is. people all the time, God that can is. use medication to heal you. That's it. And I tell people that too. I said, look. He can. I'm going to take my medication. If it does. That's right. If, if God don't tell me to stop, I'm not stopping. Is God, my pastor said this, our pastor said this a week ago, if you are dealing with an illness mm -hmm. and God mm -hmm. had the doctor put you on medication, you take that medication to the doctor and release you from it. That's right. I heard him say that. And That's sometimes the doctor may never release you, right. but God will release you sometimes. You know what? I, God had just did me like that. I suffered from it. That's from it. Depression. My, my son, you know, that killed in front of me. And so like a month ago, I went to, I go see a, a therapist, but you know, a psychiatrist to give me certain medication, sleep medication, antidepressant. Yeah. And I was sitting there and he wrote the scripture for me for antidepressant. God said, stop. Take Amen. It. That's it. That's it. And I thought, I ain't took another one since then. Amen. Now he just said, stop. Yeah, yeah. Right when he was right now to the scripture. And I, I have, I throw him every time I get, I don't take no more. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit will tell you sometimes when it's time to release yourself from medication. I, 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 I used that example a while ago in one mm -hmm. of my lessons when I was going through cancer, going through the chemo process. Six months of chemo. I got to the fifth month. And the Holy Spirit, because I asked God, I said, God, why am I still sick? Why am I mm -hmm. getting my energy back? Why am I still losing weight? Why, why these things, these side effects keep affecting me in my body? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, look up all your medications and look at the side effects. Mm -hmm. I was on 12 different medications. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit had me look at those medications. And then I heard the Lord says, wean yourself off these medicines. Mm -hmm. By the sixth month of chemo, I had weaned myself off those medications that they gave me in coincide with the chemo. Right. And when I went to the doctor, from the time I weaned myself off, all the way up until November, I got ready to move back to Milwaukee. Never took any more of those medications. Every blood test came back normal. Amen. Because I trusted in God's word. That's right. Got to trust God. And you trust God. Don't be foolish. Tell it now. Do not be foolish. That's right. If you That's got medication you know you need to take for mental illness, depression, anxiety, sickle cell, doesn't matter what it is. You right. better take that medication. If that helps keep you balanced, keep you healthy, take that medication. Until Amen. you hear God say you've been healed. And confirmation comes. One thing about Amen. this point, and this will be my final point. Mm -hmm. Even when leprosy, during the time of Old Testament, when a person was deemed to have leprosy, they were placed in exile for seven days. And every time they went out for those seven days, mm -hmm. they had to come back to the priest to show the priest if they've been healed or they still had leprosy. If God healed them, they came back to the priest and the priest would give confirmation. 
that you've been healed. Mm -hmm. And then you let them go back to their home. But if they still had leprosy, they were put right back out into exile until healing took place. Some never got healed and some got healed. But I care to you tonight, whatever it is you're going through on tonight, you continue to speak the word of God over yourself, believe the word of God, trust in the word of God, live by the word of God, and know that the word of God has the power to heal and deliver you from any situation that you may encounter. Amen. Amen. That's true. That's true. Amen. So we're going to pick up next week the rest of this. Okay. Well, I thank all of you who came. I see Pastor Connell came on tonight. God bless you, sir. I see my nieces on here, my grandson on here tonight, my friend Connell, Jenica, my friend on here. I thank God for all of you who joined in tonight. There's probably others I don't see because many times I don't see everybody's on here. But there'll be people on here that they tell me, that, hey, I was on there on your lesson last night. But I don't see it all the time. I don't see it until later on who came on. Sometimes I have 20 people on here don't even know it. You know, but I thank God for the obedience that he has given us to follow his instruction to teach his word to one another. We learn from each other. We encourage each other. We build each other up. We pray for one another for the well-being of our souls to be committed and submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, tonight I thank you for the opportunity to teach your word. I pray that heaven fall upon deaf ears will bring conviction to all of our hearts to take a moment to examine our hearts to see where we have fallen short of your glory, God. Yes, and we God. give it to the spirit of Jezebel, to seducing spirits, to the spirit of whoredom, lying spirits, adultery, fornication, anger, bitterness, Father God, resentment, hatred. Yes, Help us examine our hearts Yes, and God. come to repentance yes, God. that you will restore us, God. Forgive us and cleanse us. Make us new in your presence, God. Yes, God. New, and I new, thank new, you new. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As, as I do each week, you might be on here, might be a backslider. You might be one who never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. That includes you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You can have this life tonight, have a relationship with Jesus Christ, just by praying a simple prayer with me, as the word said, but if thou shalt confess in thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the mouth confession is made, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. By you coming to confession that I am a sinner, I need the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior. If thou shalt confess my, thy heart, the, the Lord Jesus believe in the heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. By praying this simple prayer with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, known and unknown sins, and cleanse me for all unrighteousness. Yes, and I ask that you, Lord, come into my heart, and be my Lord and Savior. Make me a new creature in your presence, in your image. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you were a backslider, you just got restored. You were a sinner, you just got born again. Because God loves you. Because he gave his son for your sin, my sin, the sin of the whole world. That we're not to die in sin. Amen. But we come to know him as Lord and Savior of our lives. And guess Amen. what? The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you because you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ tonight with your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, your will, your emotions to give to him that he can give you himself. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. Amen. You want to sow a donation into the, the ministry? There's a tag on here to sow a donation. If not, God bless you anyhow. 
Because God continues to bless me as I continue to bless his people by giving and do, doing the work, teaching and preaching the word of God as he instructed me to do. Now I pray you stay encouraged. Believe God in his promises. Believe that his word is yes and amen for you. Whatever it is you need God to do for you, you got to have faith in God. Believe that God is able to do it, to empower you, to change you, to strengthen you, and encourage you. And know amen. that he loves you so much that he amen. gave his only begotten son for you tonight that you can be born again. All you got to do is just, just know in your heart that I am his and he is mine. Yes, Lord. And I guarantee that you'll find yourself resting in the promises of God's word. Amen. So, Lord, tonight I thank you, oh God, for every participant, every person that heard this word tonight, even those who may hear it later on today, Father God, or even in the future, that it speak to their hearts, oh God, to encourage them, yes, to God. edify, build them up in their faith. If they're sick and they're afflicted, God, that you heal them that you touch them by your spirit, God. My niece, oh God, Aaron, I pray healing in her body, Father God, tonight. I pray you touch her by your spirit, God, as she's going through, Father God, labor pains and any other illness try to affect her body. We bind it in Jesus' name, oh God. Every sickness, every disease that attack your people, God, that they receive your grace and your mercy, your compassion, and your healing, God. Because your word says, Jesus was going about doing good, healing all who were sick and afflicted, for God was with him. Manifest your power, God, that you will be glorified in all of our lives. And I thank yes, you God. in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. God bless you, Sister Vernon Dean, for joining tonight as well. Amen. But I pray you stay encouraged. You don't have the book. Get that book. Get the book. Put it on the screen. Give me a second here. You got to get this book. This is a book you need to add to your library. You don't have it. Get it. I have the digital version. I don't have the physical book, but I have the digital version. But I pray that you get this book, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Cord, How to Discern the Lies, of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. You know what that is? Jezebel, her daughter, and her granddaughter. Jezebel, her daughter, and her granddaughter. How to discern the lies of these three and walk in the truth of God's word. Amen? Amen. And you have a great night, my sister. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Elder Deborah, God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate you coming on tonight. All right. You have a great night, too. You too. Thank you. You are. Well, God bless everyone. Until next week, Lord says the same. We'll zoom again at 6 o'clock hour. Y'all have a great night. Shalom. Good night. All right. Amen.